KCI's have their addressing um, management of the open abdomen and everything that you need for the temporary abdominal closure is in the dressing itself. And so in the operating room you're going to have the circulator nurse open up the uh, external bag and then the person on the sterile area is going to grab the internal bag which is packaged sterilely as well. Inside the, uh, the bag itself is going to be our granny foam, perforated granny foam dressing which is here, our, vis our visceral protective layer, which looks just like this, the tubing assembly that goes to the pump, and then five pieces of our clear drape. Same drape is, is used with our uh, vac system. So how we want to start this is after you've done your abdominal washout and you're ready to um, close your patient, you want to size the uh, visceral protective layer and if you have a large patient, you can use this intact without altering it at all. Um, if the patient is um, maybe big enough, maybe not, there is a way to tuck this down into the pericolic gutter and have it wrap back on itself like this. But if you don't have enough room, there is a specific way that KCI would like you to size this. Um, people oftentimes look at this and say that they want to size it in between each one of these uh, um, uh, chunks of, of foam, we would like you to go through the middle. The reason being is if you go through the middle and pluck out these extra pieces, you're never going to have granule foam in contact with um, abdominal contents. If you were to do this circumferentially and come all the way over to here, and let's just say you decided you were going to go across here, the, the concern is that you have a little tail of granule foam and as you tuck down that, that down into the peritoneal cavity, you can grab small bowel, large bowel, spleen, or anything else. So we want to make sure that if you are going to size this and alter it, that you're coming across the large portion and that you're removing all of these. And then you would do that circumferentially all the way around. like that. And then after you're done going all the way around, you're pulling each of these pieces out. So after you've got it sized to your patient, you're going to tuck this down into the pericolic gutters. And the claim to fame of this is that you're going to get fluid egress through these um, arms of granule foam. So you want to make sure when you're tucking this down to the pericolic gutter that you're getting all the way down into those dependent areas, down into the pelvic gutter. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you had a question. So after you tuck this down into all the dependent areas, this patient's skin is really hard. It's so after we're going to do, uh, after the visceral protective layer is placed over the abdominal contents, then you're going to size and shape the granule foam uh, that fits over the top. Now this granule foam, in my opinion, you, you should use both layers, not just one layer. But depending on the size of the laparotomy incision, you can remove one, two, or three pieces of foam and fit this over the protective layer, uh, over the visceral protective layer. The reason I like this overall is because this granny foam does a good job of making sure that the health of your laparotomy margin um, continues to be nice and healthy so when you do get fascial reapproximation and you want to reapproximate the skin, you've got good granulation tissue that's going to come together um, for the uh, closure of the patient's abdomen. So once you get your uh, visceral protective layer in, put the granny foam over the top, size the granny foam appropriately, and then you're taking our clear drape. Clear drape is just like our wound vac dressings. Place this right over the peri wound skin. And obviously, after you've done a washout, you may have irrigant on the peri wound area. You want to make sure that uh, you've got clean, dry, and intact peri wound skin. And after you stick down the first piece, you need to remove side two, which is a stabilization layer. So when you're done, you're not going to have any blue tabs, you're not going to have any green bars nice and clear just like this. Now you can use two or three of these. I do know that people use um, uh, the clear, the yellow clear drape that you guys have in the OR. What's, um, I'm losing the name. Um, Ioban, thank you. 
I do know that Ioban is used with our uh, product. Um, I've been told it doesn't cause any issues. It comes in big three foot by three foot sheets. If you so desire, um, go ahead and use that. However, there are five pieces of our clear drape. And what I've found is if you take a patient that has an open abdomen and you do half by half, you get a better rate of seal. Because oftentimes you've got a drain tube in the peri wound area or you've got uh, an ostomy in close proximity. Taking one three foot chunk of, of Ioban can cause issues in that you're not uh, uh, making sure that the peri wound skin has uh, proper adherence with our clear drape. Now, once you have the clear drape sealing the entire area, no green bars, no blue tabs, you need to remove a portion of the clear drape for application of our tubing. The removal of the clear drape, however, uh, um, we continue to try and educate people to make sure that they're cutting this appropriately. You can't cut a slit or an X and imagine that there's going to be enough surface area of granny foam exposed to be able to withdraw fluid. So you need to make sure that you're removing a two to three centimeter area. If you take a little bit of the foam, it's not a big deal, but what you need to make sure that you're doing is removing enough of the clear drape so that when you put our track pad over the top of it, that it has a fair amount of surface area in which to draw on. So this center area needs to be on granny foam. Pull off the backing, seal it right to the bottom. And by the way, I always like to do this in a dependent area. Um, uh, vent protocol in the uh, ICU always says the head of the bed is up 30 degrees. This will help gravity to remove any fluid that sits down in those dependent areas. Taking off the backing, removing the stabilization layer, will uh, attach the um, tubing assembly to your abdomen. You may also want to tack this down with uh, some more clear drape. The reason being is when you're transferring from the OR table to the bed or, or uh, the cart to the bed in the ICU or anything like that, this can be pulled off. So uh, tethering that down with more clear drape uh, also can be helpful. This is the end, and I'm, I apologize we don't have a, a pump here, but this is the end that goes into the pump, and then the canister itself sits right on, uh, right on top. And here is a picture of, of the pump and the canister right here. Oh, here's a better picture, as a matter of fact. So the 1,000cc canister goes into the pump. The pump has a two-hour battery. You, you initiate the power of the pump with the uh, uh, power. Once you start the power on the uh, um, pump itself, it starts the negative pressure immediately. There's no other on or off button. Once you get the uh, negative pressure on, you should see the granule foam shrink down as well as reapproximate those, those fascial edges. Oh, good point. There is a labeling on here. My 40-year-old eyes might have a little problem, but it says vacuum on one side, and it says patient on the other side. You want to make sure that you put the vacuum on the vacuum port of the, uh, of the canister and the patient port on the patient side of the canister. So those are the two ways that you can double-check that you're doing it correctly. If you transpose those and draw fluid into the inline filter, you will get a blockage uh, alarm. If you have that, you need to open up another dressing, which is uh, a bit of a bummer, but you can always uh, call Cindy or I and we can um, help you through those processes. So.